I think it's I think it's it's all relative to the person. When I'm talking about mindset in describing and coming up with a number of how you feel, I think it's clarity of mind and but it's also strength of mind. Like a lot of people wake up and they feel no strength in their mind. They feel overwhelmed. They feel intimidated, frustrated, fearful. Right? Mm. Like their mind's playing tricks on them, which is an old rap song. How to align yourself back with the innocence of your childhood and let that miracle mentality out. To get you to believe in miracles again, to expect them. Watch out power to just believe, expect, receive become a miracle, and then be a miracle releaser. It says their weaknesses were slowly turned to strength and they became power. I can't, I can't describe it any better. Path to mastery is your weaknesses, plural, slowly turning to strength and you become powerful. That's path to mastery. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. Today, we are with Mr. Tim Story. Tim, what's up, man? Good to see you. And I love those pictures you have behind you. Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, right? Yeah, man. The, Not the bad ghosts. company. Huh? Yeah. Company. Well, hey, you know, it's funny, too, because uh, you think, you know, we talked a little bit about them, but, the, the, you know, those, those are two people that, you know what what they did in the world they took it to the highest levels possible maybe better than anybody else i mean yeah i would say both of them i mean there's still probably nobody will ever beat brady's record and tiger woods you know he's right up there too right but yes. do you think but there's also this lack of like i because I'm, I'm in boston uh, so I, I i you know i experienced a lot of brady being in the patriots and uh he seems like he was never satisfied like no matter what he was just never happy. I don't know if happy is the right, happy is not the right word, just satisfied. Yeah, but I think you have a great title for a podcast, one of the best titles. You, you're fortunate that that was left for you to take the path to mastery. Because I think, as you know, there's different areas of your life. There's your mindset, there's your spirit, your job, your finances, your family, your social life. So a lot of people that play at that high end in one area, they're not balanced in other areas, like their family life or their mindset or even having a social life of just being a human being. So, uh, yeah, I believe you can master all of these areas. Mm. I'm wondering, and I, I want to get, I mean, you've got a, a book, uh, the, uh, the miracle mentality. Yes. Um, I have it on audio. I picked up the audible, which is fantastic. I drove around for the last, you know, three or four hours when I'm in the car listening to hey, it. Thanks a lot. Also thanks picked lot. up the hard copy. Uh, excellent. Well, I have the, uh, the, uh, tablet version on my, um, uh, Kindle. So thank you for that. Fantastic. I definitely want to talk about that. I, I don't want, I don't want to miss that. Um, but with this conversation we're having now, because you know, I, I, I can, ex I experienced some of that, that. Like, you know, I, I've been sober 18 years. And my listeners know I'm in sobriety, and if if I go back 10 years, you know, to where I am right now, I, I would say this is this would have been a life I could not have dreamt. Like, it couldn't have been any better, right? But yes. yet there's a, there's a dissatisfaction. There's a, and then this is what I've been dealing with, you know, and I, honestly, and I feel like I recently broke out of it and I'm going to share that, how, how you're uh, watching you in a video helped me with that. But is, does that ever go? Like, I feel like that's like Mike Tiger Woods, Tom Brady may have had something similar to that. Yeah. And I think that what happens to all of us is we're going through recovery and discovery at the same time. So recovery 
is from our past, could be even things in childhood or when you're a teenager or even in your 20s. So you're recovering, which means to mend, to heal, restore. And what happens many times is you get so caught up in what I call the recovery zone that you forget the discovery zone, which is life unfolding in a beautiful way. Mm. And, but like for you, David, there was a season you had to like really pay attention to your recovery zone, which was your sobriety. So you you could, could even make room for the discovery because the recovery site could take a person's life out if you don't pay attention to it. So you had to really focus there. But at the same time, at some point in your life, again, make room for the discovery, which you obviously have. And now you're living a life of recovery and discovery at the same time. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know. Well, first off, you know, we're, we're here right now with Mr. Tim Story. Tim's a an author, a speaker, a life coach, um, uh, and you work with a lot of uh, athletes, uh, professional um, entertainers, right? Yeah, I, I know. You, I don't know how you're connect. You're connected with Oprah. How are you connected with Oprah? Well, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to um, be interviewed by her, and then uh, became great friends with her, and. Uh, teacher staff and I'm in her new book, I've been in her documentary, do cruises with her, mm. get to go to all her big parties she does, working on other projects. So I consider her like family to me. Then Steve Harvey, I did every Monday for a long time. That's my guy, did a 20 city awesome. tour, 20 city tour with Steve. But you know, um, I work with over 300 entertainers as a life coach. But I've been doing this since 1992. And you just came out with your new book, as we mentioned, um, the um, uh, the miracle mindset. Mentality. Yes, the miracle mentality. What does that mean, Tim? When you what what is the miracle mentality? The miracle mentality is the mentality that we were gifted with since we were children, and uh, the word miracle means to think something that's beyond not common, not regular, that's even magical. And psychologists have found the children have a miracle mentality. And you'll say, well, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You were always thinking something, whether you had imaginary friends or you wanted to be Superman, Spider-Man, Batman. When you were a kid, most likely you thought about becoming something even if kids are in an abusive relationship, psychologists find that they still have some kind of a magical way of thinking just to escape the, the pressure that they're under, even if the kids under pressure. So the, the book, The Miracle Mentality, teaches you how to align yourself back with the innocence of your childhood and let that miracle mentality out to get you to believe in miracles again to expect them what type of power is this believe expect receive become a miracle and then be a miracle releaser so that's what you're doing right now david on this path to mastery you are releasing miracles to people's lives mm. And people's lives are being changed, even from your challenges that you had early on in life. Yeah, amen. I, I agree with you. So let's talk about. So when it comes to you know going back to that, you said the magical. Uh, you know, when, when we're kids, we have imagination. We the magic. How how do how does somebody go back to that? You know, I I I, I like if if I think of myself. Um. I still carry a lot of baggage from my childhood, man. This is just things I don't even, I don't want to think about. So, and, yeah. and I feel like that, that's the stuff that limits me sometimes. And I'm guessing that's pretty common. Like there's this scared little kid that's still inside of a 50 year old man here that every once in a while, we're like, Hey, Hey, yes. I'm here. Okay. So let's, let's look at it this way, David. So let's pretend you have a plate 
and you have five food items on that plate. So I'm not saying go back to that plate of your childhood and eat all five items, but go back and see what items you liked out of those items and take those out. Like for instance, what I do when I life coach people is I trigger them on purpose. We're used to the word trigger as a negative. Like, oh man, I went into 7-Eleven just to get something and I was triggered by the alcohol I saw. Or I was triggered by the fact they're selling pizza <laughs> in 7-Eleven and I'm trying to be on a diet. So we're triggered by things. We're triggered by what we see. We're triggered by streets we drive down, by songs we listen to. I trigger people in a positive way in getting them to remember things that worked for them in childhood. So again, if I was to look at my plate of my childhood, I didn't like my father dying at 10. So I'm not trying to think about that. I didn't like being so lower income, we couldn't buy anything. I'm not going back to that, but I am going back to Motown music, Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross and Supremes and The Temptations. So I trigger myself back there. I also trigger myself of uh, looking up uh, to stars and saying, man, I, I would like to be like Walt Frazier, New York Knicks, great basketball player, but stylish dresser. dresser. So I, I go to things off the plate of my past and I say, I need more of that innocence in my present. It's taking the little Timmy into the present Tim story. But uh, so how does one do that? Like, is it a visualization or like, how does one do something like that? I think it's an intention. So first I'll say that we live predominantly in these areas, the mundane, the messy, the madness, or the magical. The mundane is a status quo. And this, people are getting bored with themselves sometimes. And when you get bored even with yourself, you got trouble. <laughs> it's one thing to get bored with people. Some people are bored with themselves because their life become very mundane. So mm -hmm. if you're living just in the mundane and then mess starts to hit, like problems start to hit. That's what I call life interruption. So you got the mundane and you got the messy. And then where, where me and you probably come from is probably saw a lot of family members in the madness. Like, just stuff wasn't working for it, man. They were in the chaos. Yes. But how do we get back to this magical? I think it's intentional. So, number one, you have to become awake and go, what happened in my life? Number two, you take inventory and you go, man, what's going on? Am I doing this too much? How come I'm bloated? How come I'm this? How come I'm pissed off? How come I'm lethargic? So you wake up. Secondly, you take inventory. Third, you partner with the right people. Okay? You partner with the right people. The right people are going to help you get to the right place. Then the last thing I'll say on this one right now, then you got to have the right principles. And I can tell you're a faith guy, so am I. So for me, I'm all up in the Bible. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, every morning, I'm reading the wisdom books. Um, I'm a Bible guy, feeds my faith, stars my doubts, and gets me into those principles. But you got to become awake, take inventory, partner with the right people, get the right principles. Mm. I love it. So you you just helped me <clears throat> immensely, because if, if you would have asked me 10 minutes ago, I would have told you there were no joyous times in my childhood. Because yeah. my father was an alcoholic and he beat me and I was eventually taken away and in, in state, you know, New York foster care. Um, however, there were times, there were times when we traveled to, you know, West Virginia, hung out with cousins, had fun. There were other times. So that's, that's, uh, that's interesting, man. That's, that's, that's why really... I do what I do because mm. what happens is that like I'm watching the Aretha Franklin um, miniseries right now that's on TV and it's horrific, the stuff she went through when she was young. I didn't know she got 
pregnant at right about 13 years of age, or that her father, even though he's a minister, had a lot of major difficulties that he was trying to work through, that Aretha Franklin came from an abusive uh, relationship with her husband, because I only know Aretha through the eyes of my good friend, Smokey Robinson. That was one of his best friends, Aretha Franklin, all her life. And you see the beauty and the power of the music. But if we reflect and look at even the crap that we were in the midst of, there is magic in that. Because again, you are exposed maybe to cousins or games you play or music you listen to or a girl you had a crush on. There was, there was some good stuff in the midst of that crap. Mm, yeah, no doubt. Well, yeah, I, I, there was, I, and, it, and I never, it never thought of it until, until you just said that. So thank you. <laughs> can I, that, can I friend. add to that? Yeah, there's a, absolutely. There, there's a, there's a beer commercial that one of my uh, favorite um, entertainers is on. I don't know him yet. Anderson Pop. And on this beer commercial, they say Anderson Pop comes from nothing. He came from nothing. And I thought, that's a silly script writer who came up with that. Because that's not true. They make they try to make it sound like he was so lower income, so beat up, so debased. He came from nothing. You know what? Bull crap. He wouldn't be existing if he came from nothing. He came from limited and did something with it. So you came from limited, I came from limited, and we begin to master certain things, and now I don't live limited, and nor do you. Yes. So let's talk about being a life coach. Um, what is, well, first off, what is a life coach? And then how's that different from, a, I know there's a lot of coaches out, I'm a coach, right? And. I coach, I coach real estate agents on how to be better salespeople, but I, I don't call myself a life coach, but what, what's the difference in, in, I guess I asked you a few different questions there. If you, yeah, but I'm one of the OGs of them calling me a life coach. It's like going back to Aretha Franklin. They, they put on her, you're the queen of soul. Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones called him the king of pop people started calling me a life coach in the late eighties when it was not a popular term. Now it's gone wild. You get my point now, everybody's a life coach. Mm. So what I see a coach as being is a tutor, a mentor, and a person who helps someone to master an area of their life. Okay. So Tiger Woods over your right shoulder, he should have stayed with Butch Harmon because Butch Harmon had his game just, pssst, pssst. I don't know what was going on with him privately, but his swing was right there. And Tiger, if you watch this, you might disagree with me. But Michael Jordan had my buddy Tim Grover as his strength and conditioning coach. He stuck with him. Tim must have been good because he also worked with Kobe and Dwayne Wade, et cetera. So we all needed a teacher, a mentor, a coach to mask, help us master things. Now, if you just want to be okay at stuff, don't get a coach. Be your own coach, be your own person, figure it out yourself. But if you want to master something, get somebody that knows how to take you to that level. So someone asked me last week, do you get concerned about the fact that there's so many coaches? No, because there's 8 billion people on the planet. But I do believe that a lot of coaches are, are not qualified. Mm. They just do it just because they, they want to do it or it's a job or they like telling people what to do. Uh, me and you are servants. We're into serving people. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm into serving their life, their dream, their God plan. That's what I do. Well, I will give you uh, uh, absolute props on that. I mean, you, 
you we met on a in a clubhouse room i shared something and you said dm me and then you called me i mean that just shows how authentic you are and i don't know how many people would say that and then just delete the dm you know what i mean it, yeah, unfortunately and, and, and with my schedule i mean as you know yeah. i'm doing this book and we're everywhere at one time. I just watched myself just now on an on NBC show just before I got on this podcast. We're everywhere at one time. I write every month for American Way Magazine, American Airlines, every month for United Airlines. I'm in 90 airports around the world. If you look up, you'll see me. If you see me talking and you'll see the visual. I'm in now 1 million airports. I'm sorry, 1 million hotel rooms around the world. Uh, motivating people. So for me to just feel your vibe and say, hey, David, um, DM me. I want to talk to you. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. Um, let me ask you this. What, I, I heard you on another on an interview and you had said when you coach like a life, like you're taking somebody's life in your hands like that's like to me when i heard that i'm like i never thought of coaching like that <laughs> like i was you know what i mean yeah. talk, talk to us about like why why is it like that for you what's different like well the thing is is that people are more fragile than they come across because we learn how to play roles so if you're a father sometimes you're playing the role of the father if you're a husband the role of the husband we're talking about a man for a second. You go to your job, the role of whatever your job is requiring of you. We play these roles. And so underneath the role, I find many times there are many layers of somebody where a man may be extremely insecure. He might be struggling with an addiction that nobody knows about. He may be struggling with... Um, challenges in his mindset, in his spirit. Mm. He may be suicidal, but he looked like he had it all together. I mean, look at look at some of the great artists of our day. I won't, I won't name them, just out of respect for them. Sure. They have taken their own life that we just didn't see that happening. So when I, when I am working with somebody, they're entrusting me with their life. Because when they come to Tim's story, they're not just coming like uh, to, the, to the local small little taco shop or little hamburger joint. They're, they're looking at somebody that they consider this guy's top in his space. So they're listening different. Like if you saw me coach people, that's more like this. Hmm. I never get this when I coach people. Never. It's like this. So what do you coach on? What do you, what do you, you're, you're not talking about their business, right? You're talking about what? Like mindset? No, I am talking about the business. In the area of coaching, you're talking about the primary areas of, in their life. Mindset, which is I'm very good on that area. Spirituality is where I rock and roll. My doctorates in world religion. But then you have your physical body. Okay, physical body. Then you also have your job, your finances, your family, and your social life. So when I'm meeting with somebody, whether it's Drake or the guy who works at UPS, I would go through a list and I say, on a scale of one to 10, how do you see your mindset? Uh, about a four. How do you see yourself physically? How do you feel? Have you been ill? Blah, 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 blah. Oh man, I used to work out, don't anymore. Give myself a five. Family, oh, I'm all about the family. I'm with them nonstop. 10, finances, oh, oh, it's not what it used to be. Three, job, job kind of sucks, don't like it. Uh, give that a four. Okay, now I know what I'm working with. So now what I'm good at is helping you to get better in all those areas but being very strategic, very strategic. It's all planned out. I've been working on coaching for over 30 years 
and worked with seven different psychologists to help me hone in my program. So no, we're 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 in there like uh, it's almost like if you're doing surgery on someone's face, man. You don't want to mess up. <laughs> how, so here's a here's a question I hadn't thought about until you said that. How how does somebody quantify, like if somebody ranked themselves? So so like I just did something similar, and I ranked my mindset because I couldn't use seven, so I ranked it at a six. Um, but how do you quantify? Like if you you said four, and then I'm thinking, well, is my mindset really? A, I think it's I think it's it's all relative to the person when I'm talking about mindset in describing and coming up with a number of how you feel I think it's clarity of mind and but it's also strength of mind like a lot of people wake up and they feel no strength in their mind they feel overwhelmed they feel intimidated frustrated fearful right mm. like their mind's playing tricks on them which is an old rap song but i talk to some people clarity of mind is at like an eight nine ten and i think because of god in my life the bible says i will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me so i live in a lot of peace because my mind is very stayed on him Wow, I feel like my mindset is higher than than a six now after you saying that. And yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good thing. Well, very, that's very right. good thing because your mindset, David, will. will it's not a ten. Yeah, but it's okay though. I'm good with that. Your mindset will change your mood set. Mm. So whatever your mindset is, it will change your mood set. Like if you tell your little kid that. If, if it's Friday and you say, on Saturday, we're going to Disneyland. We're going. And if he wants to go to Disneyland or she, their mindset just changed the mood set. Yeah. I'm going to Disneyland. That's it. I'm going to Disneyland. I'm going to Disneyland. They wake up early Saturday morning. Their mindset just changed the mood set. So I know how to help someone with their mindset to change the mood set and to take them into the miracle mentality. That's awesome. So question my wife uh, suggested I ask, because uh, I, I really, um, I, I've been doing podcasts five years and I, I feel like I still need so much help asking better questions, which I guess is normal because I always want to be better. Path to mastery, right? I, I'm always looking to get yeah. better. One of the questions my wife had asked for you is, um, is uh, who do you, like, who do you learn from? Like who coaches you? Who who, like, if you like, need I'm, help, I'm, who do you go? No, but I'm, I'm learning from you right now. I learned, I learned from, I learned from people. I learned from documentaries, from books, TED talks, observing. I learn everywhere. But I'm, I'm learning from you. I'm, I'm picking up your vibe. I kind of have your vibe down. Um, I think you're looking young for a guy who's allegedly in his fifties. Good going. Thank you. And sure, I, sure. I could tell that you found stability in your life, that you found a way to like have a firm foundation. So I'm picking up that on you. Uh, I think your questioning, the way you do questions is working for you because you, you like to really think out a sentence very, very much like a Barack Obama. Like Barack Obama likes to really think a sentence out and then he says it. That's your style. So that's the style that's going to work for you because that's your style. So you don't want it to be anybody else's style. But so I, I learn from people, but I also have very powerful humans around me. I'm spoiled that way. Mm. And that um, people care about me and they want to help. It's, co it's common. Like, doctors who, who text me, make sure I'm okay. Um, best friends for years, text me, call me, are you okay? What do you need? When COVID hit, I mean, I must have like 30 great friends, like you need food, you need this, you need protection, what, what do you need? So, but I, I, I see that is a beautiful thing. So yeah, 
I, I'm open to learn from people. Yeah. Well, you've given me two amazing compliments. One is you said if Tiger Woods watches my con <laughs> my podcast, so that would be amazing. Yeah, and second, you you, uh, you said I, I you know uh, connected me to I guess Barack Obama, which uh, I would have never. Yeah, because never you're, you're thinking that. you're pro you process everything. I'm watching you. You process yeah. everything. Yeah. Processes. That's how Barack Obama does. Well, that's and then he pops in a certain cadence and sequence that is working for him. It helped make him the president of the United States because it was his speech years prior to yeah, him running for that. presidency. Mm. As you're saying, you remember it. Yeah. That got national attention of who is this guy. Thank you, man. That's a huge compliment. I appreciate that. There's two more things I want to. I want to. So one is, and I want. I have to share this with you because this happened yesterday. I have. I had been in a funk for a couple of days, and watching your video. At, I've been in a. I shouldn't say a couple of days. I've been in a funk for. I don't know. Different levels of it for year. A couple of years, yeah. right? The income. The, the 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 non satisfaction fulfillment thing right lack of fulfillment but um listening to what you said yesterday and and Evan brought this question out of you when when you talked about it, oh god I'm trying to remember that it was uh, like it was almost like why are you such a like what makes you a great coach and I think you your answer was something along the lines is because I've I've gone through it. Right. Like I've experienced it. Right. Yeah. Can, do you remember that conversation you yeah. had with Evan? Yeah. Can I love Evan. that. Evan's super cool. Um, I would say this, that the, the information that I've learned to be, to study in college about things I teach to be coached by Dr. Helen Mendez, I think one of the best psychologists of our time, who's now in heaven, African-American lady who taught at a prestigious college. That helped me. She loved me so much that she helped me become a master in coaching. All those things have helped, but also the fact is that I care about people because I'm a wounded healer. I understand mm -hmm. pain. I understand the pain of my that's it. Father dying at 10, my, my sister dying two years later in a car accident when her friend was driving. My sister didn't ask to die. She was in the back seat. The friend went off the road and my sister died. The other two ladies lived. And then my brother passing, uh, struggling with addiction, couldn't get his body where it needed to be and he passed. So I'm a wounded healer, but I'm good with that. Like, I think, I think I'm best slightly being wounded. I'm not trying to be um, the guy who's like, check me out. I got it all together and everything. And look at my amazing woman and my amazing kids and my amazing two dogs. That's not the billboard that I'm putting up on the highway. I'm a wounded healer, but I get crap done. And that's why they look for me. Mm. So what I took from that yesterday, and I, I, I had breakfast with my pastor this morning, is, is um, the reason that I've been going through this, this, uh, I, I don't even know what you want to call it, just, just frustration, I guess, uh, lack of fulfillment. I mean, I've got an amazing family. We've got the house we picked out, the cars we drive. I mean, you know, I, I know you, were, you had the cars when you were younger. You talked about that in your book. And in, in, I remember the story you shared with the suit, with the uh, suit, the lady made you change, the, change your outfit. <laughs> <That's>, um, <laughs> but, um, but what I'm getting at is it, it clicked that I had to experience this so that now I can experience, because the, the, I'm coaching real estate agents that there's so much more potential. They're not even close and something's in the way, right? So now I, I have to experience somebody that, has has made it to what I want, where I wanted to be, and then just been so discontent with it. Yeah. So in, for me to experience that now, I can I can feel that for somebody else. Does that make sense? Like it that does, came it, to me this morning. It makes complete sense. And the funk is not all bad, because the funk could be God speaking to you that there's more. Mm. So don't forget. 
Peter had a night of funk. He was fishing. The Bible says Luke chapter 5, he was toiling all night. He kept coming up empty. Okay, and so he's bummed out. He's like, whoa, why am I coming up empty, dude? I'm a good fisherman. So what happened is that God allowed that part of Peter to dry up because he was going to go from fish of fish to fish of men. So Jesus says to Peter, throw out your net for a catch. And Peter goes, man, I've been toiling all night. I came up empty. The, the New Testament is written in, in Greek. And it's the word kinos, empty, which means I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. I'm having a funky night. And Jesus said, I'm going to take care of your funk. Just cast your net. And as soon as he does this in obedience, it's now God's super on his natural. And it becomes a supernatural catch that they get so many fish that the nets begin to break. Mm. It stretches it to the max. So what I'm good at is getting people in a funk and taking them to amazing places. Some of the people that I coach were in hugely funky places and became the biggest stars in the world. You just got to know what to do when you're in the funk. You can't just say, get the funk out of my face. <laughs> get the you got to laugh at stuff like that, brother. Come on, man. <laughs> That's an yeah. old Brothers Johnson song. Yeah. Uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta know this stuff if you're going to be from where you're from. <laughs> get the funk out of my face. I love it. I love song. it. <laughs> I'm stealing that one right away. So <laughs> let me, so this question, I, so what would you say is the greatest lesson that you learned? Like, like from, like from coaching or do you have like, what's a, what's a, I don't know if you want to answer that question. You can, I don't know. You probably get that question a lot. Right. Um, what's a question that you never get? Like, what's the question you would ask? Like if you were interviewing the person that you felt was, had so much impact, what question would you ask? I would, I would say, I would say this, that with the people that you coach, Tim, who live these amazing lives, do they know that their lives are amazing and do, do they enjoy the amazing life that they live? So let me give you the answer to that question. The people that I coach, I ask the question. I say that even while that movie was coming out or even when, when you're dominating the, this sport or that sport or you know, all these amazing things that we see you do worth all this money, whatever. Do you ever feel like you suck? I ask them that. And a hundred percent of them say, yeah, I feel like I suck. Like you suck at what? I suck at being a mom or I suck at being a dad or I suck at being a, a, a good father or I suck at being good to my mother because she lives down the street, but I don't see her. This is interesting. I've asked the greatest athletes in the world, and I won't say the names right now, and said to them, at your height, did you know you were the person? Well, I knew it to a degree because everybody said it. I said, but did you secretly think you sucked mm. in at least certain areas? And they, they all say, yes, I secretly sucked. Ask Tom Brady. He's got sides in that he knows he secretly sucks. So does Tiger Woods. That that happens to be uh, uh, an actual official rookie. He signed that at Natick Mall his first year when he was with the Patriots. That's He's cool. got the certificate on the back and everything. And and I posted something on Facebook a couple weeks ago, and I says if if. How would you, I don't know, something along the line, I don't have the post in front of me, but if, you, if he only knew, like if you only, like if, if we only knew this was going to be the GOAT and, and somebody's yeah. remark was, well, he knew, he already knew. Maybe yeah. none of us knew, but he knew. But that's cool that you have that. Mm. So I take all that in, number one. That's cool you have that. And I, I believe he knew, he knew he was going to do something great. Whether to this level, I don't know. But but if you think you suck, here's what I say. I suck, now what? Well, what are you going to do about it? Mm. 
In the areas where I suck, I do something about them every week. There are areas where I suck, but I work on them. <laughs> That's awesome. What's what's the greatest lesson you've learned? We'll, we'll wrap with that. Um, one of the greatest lessons I've learned is to be in the moment. Like if you notice, I'm talking to you, but I'm, I'm actually right here. So I live fully present, fully feeling, fully alive. I don't have this on my mind and something else on my mind. I have this on my mind. That's the greatest lesson. I live in the power of now. Jesus said, if I take care of the birds of the air, how much more will I take care of you? How much more valuable are you than a bird? Who of you by worrying so much could add more to his life by worrying? Mm. Therefore, consider this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. I live in the power. I'm, I'm like totally present. That's why when people say, what's next? You got movies. I got I'm working on movies, big ones. Big plays, Broadway plays. I've got about three TV shows I'm working on right now. Is that exciting? Yeah, that's exciting. But it's exciting to talk to David Hill. Look, talking to David Hill. <laughs> I appreciate you, my friend. How, how do um, I, I would be 100% present with you, too, except I'm taking notes <laughs> um, of however I am. And I, I just want to say I appreciate you and and, um, and I, yeah, I shouldn't even have said that because I, I've been present with you. I just want to, I want to, you know, keep the conversation going. Yes. Um, um, how, do, how do people get a copy of your book? I think that the cool thing about this book is that I'm not like trying to sell it. It's a movement. So I don't know if you're hearing what's happening, like on Pueblos alone, when Grant Cardone threw that party for me that people were buying a thousand at a time, mm. not one, a thousand. Why did a guy just place an order for 2,500 at one time? Why did a lady two days ago place an order for 500 at one time? You know why? We're in a pandemic, humans. We're quarantined. We got people that have so much pain. You better get into your miracle mentality. So this is a this is a prerequisite for a better life. This is essential reading. Does that make sense? This yeah, is not yeah. like, this is not, I think, oh, that guy was pretty good. No, you should probably get this for a relative in your family that's in trouble and let them meditate on this for a while and see what happens. A guy DM me today and said, months ago, I had blisters on my feet because all I did is walk around from every place to every place because I couldn't afford a, a car. He says, because of your teaching on the miracle mentality, Tim Story, you have changed my life. Even though I bought this beat up kind of rundown car, look what I've done. My life is getting better off the miracle mentality. That's exciting to me. So it's everywhere. That's the name of the book. I'm Tim Story. You're going to put all the information Follow me on Instagram, Tim Story Official, uh, TimStory.com. But follow David Hill, the path to mastery. Follow him, lift him up, tell people about this podcast, share the word. Dude, we were Tim, spitting, we were spitting fire today, man. This was not normal. Tim Story. So the book, I I I give out uh, books as well. So you're you. I'm going to order uh, at least 25 copies of your book to, and I can would encourage I everybody that? listening. Can I hold you to that? Yes, yes, sir, man. I do it right when we, right when we're done. Hey, David Just, is buying 25 yes, of these sir. books. All you have to do, DM us, okay? And my guy Joseph will get back to you so we can get you a discount. So if you want to buy 25 books or more, all you people that have big, big businesses, do that. And then we also have a life coaching program. If you think you're a life coach, want to learn how to be a better mentor, go to timstory.com. It shows you all about my life coaching system and how we do that. It's phenomenal. Tim Story, you are a, a phenomenal human being. I just want to say thank you. And do you would you would you answer the? I know I said we were done with questions, but what what does path to mastery mean 
to you? Well, I think that there's a, I got to go Bible. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 32, that the greats of God, Gideon, Moses, David, all the people in Hebrews 11, it says their weaknesses were slowly turned to strength and they became powerful. I can't, I can't describe it any better. Path to mastery is your weaknesses, plural, slowly turning to strength, and you become powerful. That's path to mastery. Boom. Mic drop, man. Thank you. <laughs>